We have a lot of young listeners, and I'd love to hear your advice to them. Okay. Well, when you say young listeners, the first place my mind goes is to young wives and young mothers with small children at home. Uh, And what I want to say to those ladies is that one of the most spiritually and intellectually rewarding things that you can do in this stage of your life is to do your best to carve out some little pockets of time for structured learning. In addition, and I need to emphasize that in addition to your personal Bible reading, I will tell you from experience that the payoff is profound in so many aspects of your life from parenting older children to discipling or even evangelizing other family members, friends, and coworkers. I sometimes tell this story, and for any listeners that have heard me elsewhere, you may have heard me tell the story of how when my older son was only seven years old, he confronted me with questions about the very existence of God. And I had been in my graduate program at Biola University for just one semester, but already I had the knowledge and the wherewithal to give him a very simplified version of what's called the Kalam cosmological argument. And he understood it as even Mm. a seven-year-old. So uh, some of you may have heard me tell that story before, but what I've not told out loud publicly is the follow-up to that story. So this boy who asked me that question at seven years old is now about to be 20. And when he graduated from high school, we took him out to dinner and there were a couple of friends that joined us. And over the course of the conversation at the table, my son was very quiet. That's just his nature, especially when he's in a big crowd of people. He tends to just be quiet and observe and listen. And these friends of ours that had accompanied us to dinner were asking me about some career frustrations that I had shared with them a couple weeks before. And I was sort of snarky and I complained a little bit. uh, And then I just offhandedly said, I should have gone into a different line of work. (laughs) And my son, who was sitting next to me, literally put down his fork and turned to me with this stern expression on his face. And he said, Mom, I don't think I'd be a believer if you had not mentored me in the intellectual side of the faith, because I have to have good reasons to believe something. And in that moment, it was like a Holy Spirit sledgehammer reminding me that despite any frustrations I have with the surface level things like what position I'm in or what I'm teaching or how much money I'm making doing these things, Um, that the kingdom value of what I had studied over the past 15 years um, was far, far more important than any of those things. Um, And So um, I tell that story um, as an encouragement and an exhortation to the young wives, the young mothers um, who maybe haven't thought about the value of Um, lifelong learning and of intellectual discipleship at your stage of life. And it could look like something as simple as listening to lectures and podcasts when you're folding laundry at midnight, you know, just do something to continually develop your mind during that stage. It's easy to let that fall by the wayside because you're putting so many other people's needs ahead of your own. Um, But in this way, uh, you're actually putting needs, future needs of your family um, at a large priority by equipping yourself. 